Today, guys, we are picking up my barn find R32 Skyline from Paint. And just to refresh your memory, when I bought the car, it looked like this. The boys have been sending me photos of the finished product and man, it looks absolutely insane. Let's go check it out. I'm super excited, guys. A few nights ago, we were invited to watch the car get painted, and it was crazy seeing it get done in person. Anyway, Nathan and I grabbed a trailer and headed to the shop. All right, guys, we have just arrived, and I can see the front of the skyline right over there. <laughs> Holy crap, bro. It looks insane. What? All right, guys, here we go. We're just walking up now to the skyline. <laughs> Holy crap. That's insane. Wow, that's crazy. It's very nice. I decided to paint the R32 Nissan GTST black because these cars look gangster blacked out and I wanted to maintain the original color. It is insane to see this thing from you know where it came from to now. This was a full open door respray with the glass out and it came out exceptional. I think the hardest thing on the build was the roof. Like the roof was absolutely cooked when we brought it here. And I want to show you guys, it's been fixed. Have a look. Just to refresh your memory guys, this is what it looked like when I first brought it to Auto Indulgence. It would take almost a miracle to get this roof looking good again. If the roof wasn't able to be fixed, I would have been in big trouble. Now obviously the proper way to repair this, I was instructed to get a half cut basically, like the top half of the car off another car. But of course with the budget that I had, that was just not feasible. So we had to just deal with what we were working with. That took a lot of hours. My advice was to get a roof cut, you know, that all comes down to money, let alone trying to source one. You know, as we attended on, you know, like the centre, the outside will bow, and then it was just a case of keep massaging it down until we, we got the best possible result. And somehow, we have retained this body line. Look, your attempt was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. Um, it's just again, being nice, man. <laughs> working on the body line is the main thing. If you don't get the body line right, then... That's what I was struggling with. Like, when I was sanding this thing down, the body line just disappeared and I was like, shit, yeah. what do I do? Now, guys, if you're looking for a body kit or just want to get your car painted, please DM Auto Indulgence Australia and speak to Lalit because if he can get a roof fix that was lifted up by a forklift, then he can fix anything. <laughs> I basically just call myself an automotive consultant. Um, That's it. I try to help you in every sort of aspect that I can. If I can't directly help you, I'll direct you where you can get it done. Also comes down to a lot of conversations with own off the vehicle to yeah. find out what they want, what their budget is. You've got to get it down to the bare bones and build it up and see what you're working with. Anyway, it was time to load the car up on the trailer. And having such an aggressive front lip, it did make it a bit tricky, but we got it up in the end. And man, seeing this thing out of the shop moving is just mind blowing. I guess I got some explaining to do because we now have two Skylines in the garage. This is kind of mind blowing guys. I never thought I'd have two R32s. How is this the same car as this? Every single panel straight, no rust at all. And the paint is insane, it's immaculate. It's been painted factory Skyline GTST black. So it's got some deep metallics in there, some awesome flakes. I just can't believe that the car has gone through such a crazy transformation and it just looks like this now. It's so trippy. The next thing that we need to do to this thing is uh, replace the interior. And I've got some special parts for it. So let's get to that. So while the Skyline's been gone, I've been ordering parts from Japan. I paid a lot of money for this one. This is everything that we had in the boxes that we shipped from Japan. Look at this, all the way from Japan, and we can confirm this because the packaging materials as well. Look at that, newsletters. 
Japanese baby. Little side note for you, I'm actually really excited about Japanese stuff in Japan because I'm actually going there at the end of March. How cool. So hopefully we can pick up more parts. Anyway, we have some door cards. We got some genuine GTST Type M floor mats, A and B pillar trims, the trims that go on the quarter panel. We've got the lower dash. We've got the indicators, some door switches, and the surround as well. We've also got a shifter boot right there. I've got a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna get straight to it. Yeah, let's get this thing done because uh, I'm excited. I started by installing these fresh door cards on both the doors. Unfortunately, we don't have speakers and we don't have the plastic sheet that goes on before the door card, but we will get back to that. We're just installing everything that we have now. The door card was super easy to install and my spare bolts helped me out a lot. It's also very handy to have a magnetic screwdriver. You can grab chicane tools at Autobahn. They're some of the best tools on the market right now and I've been using them for all my latest car builds. Anyway, installing these door cards transformed the interior. After that, I installed the A-pillar trim, which was a bit tricky because all the holes where the clips go had old clips in them. And then I installed the seatbelt cover trim, which was there when I bought the car. The trim that I bought for the quarter glass was unfortunately a little bit damaged as it was an old part from Japan. And we also weren't able to install the seatbelts fully as there was a bolt missing. So I'm going to have to source that as well. I then paid some attention to the shifter. And as you can see, the old dust boot was damaged. So I sourced an OEM dust boot and here's the part number. Here's the comparison of the two boots after I removed the old one. And I thought to remove the boot, I'd need to take out the shifter. So I removed the C-clip holding it all in place, which was not fun, but I found out you could just cut the old boot off and stretch the new boot on. Look at how good this looks now. I then installed the top boot that I got from Japan. And after that, I installed a radio surround trim, which again was unfortunately a bit damaged, but we're working with a budget here, hence the condition of the parts. Now you've already seen these installed before, but I installed the rear seats as well. And this is the problem with buying secondhand parts from Japan. These dash trims are really difficult to find online. And the one that I found had unfortunately been broken. You can see that the buttons on the trim were sagged. And that's because behind the trim where the buttons bolt on, the plastic was broken. And in order to fix this, I would need to fix the plastic to hold the button in place. So I decided to give plastic welding a go for the first time. I used a soldering iron and used some zip ties as filler and I managed to fix the buttons pretty well and as you can see it all holds in place and the button works perfectly now so i installed the dash trim i installed the indicator stalk which was missing i then installed the passenger seat and at this point the interior was 90 percent complete we still have a few parts missing just like this door card trim bit right there um, we're also missing the little trim piece that goes right there and we're also missing that back panel that goes on the driver's side rear quarter other than that though guys have a look at this it is so sick i finally got the passenger seat in and the driver's seat is in the dash trim is all on it is looking hella fresh right now you know comparing to what the car was like before we still need a shift knob and boot right here but guys this is insane when i bought the car it literally had no interior it, it had basically some seats and that was about it all the plastic trims the door cards weren't uh in the car at all now yes we don't have every single piece of the interior but there is one thing that is going to transform this car and i didn't need to buy these but i bought them anyway and that is the genuine gdst type m floor mats we're going to throw these in now and i reckon this is going to look sick So it's been a few days since we put the floor mats in and guys, it looks so sick. The interior is basically complete at this point. Only a small little few things that we need to get to install before we can call it 100% complete. But um, I've been sick the past few days, so I've had to take a little bit of a break, but we're back. I just wanna see this car complete. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the seals that seal the door uh, to make sure obviously there's no water that goes through when it rains. And honestly, the proper way of doing it is you need to install the glass first because the trim sort of like clips over the glass, but we do not have anyone coming around and install the glass anytime soon. So I'm just gonna have to remove it when they do come install the glass. But yeah, let's get to installing the rest of the trim pieces. A lot of the stuff's just up in the garage over there. So I'd rather it on the car and clearing up some room in the garage. So let's get to installing. More of the stuff for the interior, baby. There are two parts to this weather strip that seals the door from the outside world. But firstly, you have to install the piece that clips onto the body of the car. Everything on this car is literally held together by clips. 
So of course, this as well was just some clips. And after installing the first trim piece, you can see why I'll need to remove it later to install the glass, because the glass clips into this trim piece. The second bit of the trim piece slash weather seal was this rubber. Now of course, this is also held in by clips on each corner, but then you have to sort of massage it into the first trim piece. And it was actually more difficult than I thought. You have to push it much further than you think, so I got my thumbs in there, and I massaged it in place. Finally, there was one more weather strip that went on the inside of the first trim piece and the rubber seal sort of just pressed in place with ease. As you can see, the door now closes with the seal. It's looking awesome. Have a sus, guys. But we will need to take this off again uh, to get the glass in like I showed you before. Like there is a, uh, a little clip sort of thing that goes in where the glass goes. So we're going to have to move this out the way when the glass guy comes. But for now, it's looking pretty dang decent. Very happy with it, and best of all, when we close the door, the glass doesn't shudder anymore. Now on to the next problem. So, if we come over here to all the parts, we have these seals right here, and they are absolutely destroyed. Luckily, we have two skylines over here, so we can you know, show you what they're supposed to look like. You can see that this uh, uh, is all black, and it's mint. Look at that. Whereas this one, all the plastic is sort of peeling back, and uh, yeah, all the metal is exposed, so. My plan is to basically take off all this plastic with a razor because I can't actually just peel all of it off as it sort of seals against the door. So I'm just gonna get a razor cut all along here and uh, then paint over it and hopefully it looks okay. Ideally in this situation, you would just replace the trim, but we're gonna work with what we have, of course. So I got out a razor, I chopped off as much plastic as I could. This was pretty difficult to do and was quite dangerous because if I slipped, I'd cut myself. After that, I cleaned everything up, gave it a few coats of paint, and then installed it. And the difference between before and after is unreal. If I installed the old ones, it just wouldn't have looked good and these look so much better. All right, guys, we now have the trims installed. And if you saw what these were like when I had them on the car before, um, you know how much of a big difference this is. But have a look at that. You can't even tell that these were like worn away now. Um, obviously, if you come up close, like it's not perfect. Like obviously we do need brand new ones, but for now these are pretty good. Here's the driver's side. So you can have a look at this one too. But yeah, this one's looking pretty, pretty decent. Very nice. So guys, here is the next problem with this R32 Skyline that I've sort of shown in the past, but not in too much detail. And this is like the make it or break it situation when you buy a car like this. Now, obviously the roof was bad on this thing. It's now been repaired. And what I'm about to show you is repairable, but it's pretty bad. It's, it's on the verge of not being repairable. <laughs> so let's go underneath the car. And firstly, Look, it's pretty, pretty clean under here. Upon first inspection, like, it's not too bad. Like, it needs some bushings. Uh, this bushing's pretty bad. There is the problem. Right there. As you can see, the frame rail right there is, uh, pretty kinked. It's kinked from about here all the way down to where it ends. Which is pretty damn bad. There's a little bit of a hit in the floor panel right there, but nothing too crazy. Same situation with down here as well. But like I said, everything is fixable and you know, it could be a lot worse. I wasn't able to fully look underneath the car when I bought it, obviously, because you know, it was sitting on the shop floor of some dude's shop and he didn't really care much about it. And he wouldn't even put it up on the lift for me or the hoist. And the guys literally just used a forklift to li lift the entire car up when he's ever needed to move it. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is what it is. Um, we've also got the problem with this like weird knocking sound when we turn the steering wheel so hopefully we can figure that out um let's see if i try to rotate the wheels i don't see anything wrong here i thought this bushing was all good because it's obviously been replaced with like a polyurethane one but no that's all chewed up i don't know how that happens and then we also have the tie rod ends right there they are completely destroyed we don't have any uh movement though which is a bit odd and it's the same on the other side but yeah it looks like the last thing that needs to be completed is the underside of this car so suspension not the most ideal because honestly that stuff is less exciting compared to like motor stuff um, i personally enjoy working on the motor rather than suspension because <laughs> i've done a lot of work in, on suspension in the past and it's not fun but it could be much worse than that We 
still have a lot to go on this R32 Skyline build. The plans aren't finalized yet, but hopefully next video or the video after I can sort of explain what I'm going to be doing with both the Skylines. I really appreciate all your support, really appreciate all your love, and if you want to help support the channel, head over to BankySpec.com, and if you enjoyed the video, chuck us a like. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya! Think, bro. It's true. <laughs> Today, guys, we are picking up my. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>